it in the highest fire I, I, in love with reality flowing so right I, 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 I. I know you like my type I see you love my vibe let me be your guy all right it's now time for one of my favorite segments celebrity knock it's a Friday feature where we welcome influential figures. We're talking real star quality to lime with us in studio. This week's guest is a singer and songwriter who is no stranger to the world of music and entertainment with a musical background in piano and acoustic guitar. She stands out as a diverse artist as she also portrayed Marcia Griffiths a member of the i3s in the production, Bob Marley, One Love. I'm so pleased to be joined in studio by the woman herself, Naomi Kawan. We finally made it happen. Here, finally, here. finally. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. And Naomi, yeah. this time you sit on this set with so much more from the last time we spoke added to your resume. I'll start with the most recent Bob Marley movie. Everybody wants to know about it. We had Savannah on set and she spoke about her role, but I'd love to hear about one. How did you get that opportunity? Like, how did everything happen? Well, well how I got that opportunity, I think the opportunity really came to me truly because, um, you know, when I heard about it, I told them I was interested in auditioning and I actually had a break between filming or record taping for CPL right. in 2022. So I was in between St. Lucia and Guyana. Right. And I just happened to be home in the same week that they were here in Jamaica, auditioning, looking at locations, everything. And so the casting person said, can you come in person to audition? Um, I've never acted at that level before. You I've done commercials. Think that. <laughs> so I've never really been in the film industry or in that space at all as an actress. And so I walked in and did my audition. And within two weeks, you, you know, they called me and said, we need your passport and all this kind of stuff to come together. So it felt like an opportunity that I was prepared for, given that as a as a you know, being a woman in reggae music now, I felt that it's my responsibility to carry on the mission that was started then which is why I wanted to be part of it, because I saw that here we get an opportunity to tell the story um, in today's time, but reflecting on what reggae music is built upon. Yeah. And of course, reggae music is about Bob Marley, but it's really about what Jamaica was going through at the time yes. and all of the different pieces of the puzzle that brought together what we know to be reggae music. You know, it came from a a very rebellious place. You know, we might look at it now as reggae is such a nice, oh, reggae music is so nice and it's so soothing, but it's because we needed that sound to carry us through what was happening. Jamaica was, you know, newly independent, so much political conflict. And even today, we're still struggling as a nation with all, all right. of the things associated with colonialism. And so Bob, Tosh, Third World, Inner Circle, all of our foundation artists, including Marcia Griffiths, they were carrying a torch you know, carrying this this fire with them. So I, I knew I really wanted to be part of it. I love how you said Marcia Griffiths and then it was you, right? Yeah. Marcia, I want, how much work? I want to know about the work that went into, of course, studying her and becoming Marcia Griffiths. Very, very good question. Yes, I um Before I've always studied her, by the way, I've yeah. always studied her, especially when I decided to pursue music full time. She's one of the women in reggae music I wanted to study. You know, herself, um, Nadia, um, Nadine Sutherland, Elaine, you know, Phyllis Dillon, my mom, Carlene Davis. Yes. I've just, I, I invest myself into research and maybe that comes from a journalism background where I really throw myself into understanding. So I've been studying her for quite some time, but then becoming her, was a different thing because I had to really talk to her one, talk to those that were around to understand what the experience would have been like. And if you think about it, you know, she's a, a woman on her own pursuing her music and then she gets asked to be part of another person's yeah, situation and to be his background singer. And she was already a star in her own right. And so I thought a lot about those things and even just, um, asked her about her bodily movements too because we had to watch a lot of that footage and so you know it was a privilege to become her because for her she was really serious about the mission and she told me she said you know if you look at the videos she wasn't too smiley smiley 
And I had to change that because I'm naturally a bit more <laughs> of a pleasant, yeah. I have a very pleasant disposition and I had to adjust myself and think about her and what would have been going on in her head. And, um, you know, thankfully after one of our dress rehearsals, Sidella Marley came over to me on set and said, why? She was like, you're coming like Sister Marcia. <laughs> she was like, you have her luck. You know, and that was such a big compliment. So there was a lot of becoming, as you said. Yeah, and you spoke about mission. And I feel like you have your own personal mission when I listen to your music. What I love is the woman empowerment and the fact that you make it your business as a woman to ensure that other women are heard. I love that. Thank you. That is a big part of my mission. Since I was, oh my goodness, since I was as young as I can remember, I've always felt um, passionate about women being themselves. And maybe it's because I was a little bit of a troublemaker in school and maybe I had a lot of teachers not so happy with me always you? being so. Yeah, man, just because <laughs> being very, very loud and, and outgoing child. And I noticed that girls were always told to sit down, be quiet, be nice, be good, be a good girl. But you look at a little boy and he said, go after it, jump and broke up your bones. And he said to a little girl to, to relax. And thankfully I had parents that would empower me to be a leader. You know, when I went, I used to go to, I went to Heidel Prep and um, every, every start of the school year, my dad would tie my tie for me and he would say, you're a leader, not a follower, send me off to school. You know, so I think I've always seen that in the world, women are told to be something instead of told to be who they want to be. Yes. So yeah, in my musical career, I've just always found a way, not just in my writing, but if I have a platform to share, always bring other girls on stage with me, always rope them into whatever I can if I have the ability to do that, or even just just offer space and encouragement. I've just been, that's I, just been who I am, yeah. yeah. I get that from you, for sure. Yeah. Well, Naomi, mm -hmm. you just touched on your, your parents, and I would mm -hmm. like you to talk a little bit sure. more about them, because they were steeped in, in music. Your mom, Carlene Davis, and your dad, Tommy Cowan. I remember growing up, Tommy used to do a lot of, I know he was involved in music, but he used to do a lot of the adverts for musical shows. Yes. And he had this line, yes indeed, indeed. Yeah, yes yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that well, but as, as parents, Tommy Cowan and Carlene Davis, who Carlene was a huge hit in the 1980s as one of the premier mm -hmm. Jamaican songbirds. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the platform that they set for you to inspire you to, to, to be a part of the music world? Yeah, well, truthfully, I actually ran away from that platform well, for you did. a really long time. Initially, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've always loved performing and I've always loved storytelling. And I think being the a bit of a stubborn person I am, I've wanted to carve my own path so badly that I never really dove into music first. So I actually studied broadcast television in university and I was focusing on that for a really long time. And um, the music thing is, music is something that if it's inside of you and it's embedded, you can't run away from it. And so I got to a place after graduating university where I realized I wasn't fulfilled and I wasn't satisfied. So. You know, they've set a platform for me, but they always gave me the choice and just said, do what you feel called to do. But the day I decided, I said, boy, I have to do this. If I don't do this, you know, I might regret it. Yeah. And they said, well, the first thing you need to start doing is just working on your craft. Because the platform is there, but if I don't show up, it don't matter who you are, you know, and especially in our culture, you have to really show that you have the chops. Um, Jamaican audiences are not forgiving at all. You know what I mean? So. They've given me the platform, but more than anything, they've shown me how to treat people right. And that's what I've learned from them more than anything else, you know, in terms of just how they treat people that work with them, how they function as professionals. To me, that's more important than the fame or the recognition, yeah. because that's what carries you in the long term. You know, when 20, 30 years pass, we remember each other. So we'll remember the experiences we had. and Yeah, how people made you feel. How people made you feel. So I think for me, that's what I've learned the most from them. Yeah. yeah. And can you talk briefly about the transformation of your parents? Because mm. back in the 80s, um, Carlene Davis, your mom, sang a lot of reggae music and so on, but both your parents made this transformation into gospel and being Christian people. How much did that impact on, on you, first of all, as a, a growing girl and into your adult life? Yeah, it, had it, it, it has its positives and you know, negatives as well, because at the end of the day, um, you know, religion in a way can be a business. And 
seeing sometimes how institutional religion affects people, like for me, made me not really want to be in gospel music. I felt it was more important to reach as many people as possible. The positives though, and even before my parents converted to Christianity, they've always been spiritual people. My dad was a Rastafarian for a long time. My mom has always just been a woman of faith and a woman of prayer. So truthfully, before that transformation, they instilled in all of us just a consciousness of, of, of faith and a consciousness of self and a consciousness of connection. You know, so I think when they went deeper into that, um, I think I just more saw, more than anything, I saw that they wanted to help more people, yes. if that makes sense. But even before that, my dad and mom just always supporting, like there's somebody school fee need to pay them, get up and pay it and whatever the case is. And then when they went into Christianity, their goal was now to spread the gospel to more people. And as you know, Fun in the Sun, which is a massive event taking place again this year, you know, they attract thousands of people and just hopefully expose them to a message that gives them a little bit of hope. Yeah. So um, for me, I, I, I love what they've done, but it also showed me that um, that's their path and for me and I you want have your to own. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a mix I guess you call it a mixed bag. Yeah. Yeah, and, which and is life. As you speak about your own path and we get ready to wrap this interview, your music, your new music. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that. Because I want every one of our viewers to be able to go listen to it and get a taste of what you know, your beautiful beautiful voice. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I um I collaborated with a producer in London recently and he um he had a rhythm project as as we know rhythms is when you put the same you put different songs on one instrumental so it's called gratitude is the attitude and he asked me to write a song on it so i wrote a song two days before i left for the bob marley premiere in london yes and i wanted to write a song that told the story of where i was in my journey and it's called soul direction and um you know it's one of the raw most raw songs i've written because i recorded it one time didn't go back and fix it anything wow. you know and um, which is a little bit nerve-wracking for an artist yeah. to just put something down on and that's a it. record and that's it but i just didn't have any more time okay one recording session one writing session so that's called soul direction and um, lots of new music coming out i have a song with kabaka pyramid coming out soon on sean paul's label dirty rock on his rhythm called brimstone that's called see you tonight right. so you know for everybody watching just follow me on the gram and all that stuff and you know yeah keep up to keep date up to date <laughs> <laughs> all right naomi as always a pleasure chatting with you and hopefully you can join us again sometime yes. soon. And, and we'll be seeing you on cpl coverage this right year. yes Let because we, we, we've grown accustomed to seeing you covering i know CPL I, love that. <laughs> I know well, we'll see we'll see i will i will see yeah we'll all see. right and naomi cohen there of course head across to youtube and as she said you can follow her on her social media platforms and check out that beautiful music. You, you never put up a fight, no. Paradise Club. Just know me like we knew we never had to say your word, not your show. Silence, you, you never put up a fight, no. Paradise Club. Just know me like we knew we never had to say your word, not your show. Silence. Spending time on the regular. We'll pass the days when you just come up on my cellular. If I'm the book, then you're the editor. Cause you know we always bringing all the best in us. It's not a rushing.